Mike was meant to introduce a break, but he's introduced me. So, uh, Mike, uh, give it up! We wish you would. No, it's too late, I was starting, it's like, it's like interrupting sex, it's never going to be the same afterwards, you know. But uh, before I even start tonight, I just want to say, take this opportunity to uh, congratulate my two friends, they know who they are. On the birth of their new baby son. this. <laughs> he weighed in at 10 pounds, 15 ounces. I know he's technically twins. But I'm waiting for the uh, I'm waiting for the photographs because he's a he's a button photographer. The the dad, I mean, not the baby. Well, he might be as well, but I haven't met him. But, uh, but I got the first one today on Facebook and. Uh, He's massive, but the photo of him is absolutely lovely in panorama. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and I've just signed up to Twitter actually, and uh, I'm not a massive fan of uh, social media, but uh, it's, like a, it's like a shitter version of Facebook. At least on Facebook, you know, you, you are like friends with people on Facebook on some kind of personal level. But Twitter, it's a... You have to make friends, pretend to be friends with people that you don't even know, while a bunch of other strangers follow you. A bit like how it was in prison. <laughs> the people who laughed at being in prison. <laughs> the people who just laughed then are uh, also being in prison. Uh, yeah, so Cambodia, it's good to be here. Uh, by way of a cheer, uh, who lives here? Yeah. Any NGOs in tonight? Yeah. No, they're probably off somewhere, paying vastly over the odds for everything, therefore increasing the value of living for all the neighbours. I'm just guessing because everybody knows that's the best way to make friends in a new city. Uh, do we have any any teachers in tonight? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm a teacher myself. And we really do deserve this night out, don't we? With all that money that we save. <laughs> for buying fake qualifications. Uh, by way of a cheer, who is here on holiday tonight? Yeah. Woo! Nice, to, nice to meet you both. Uh, any backpackers in? Woo! Oh, of course there is, it's free to get in. I used to be a backpacker myself, but uh, you don't have to get some cheap backpackers, don't you? Like, I've seen a couple of them downstairs before, rocking out, sharing a dreadlock. <laughs> Just because you're a backpacker, it doesn't mean you have to dress like a dick. <laughs> Take a leaf out of my book. Dress like a dick all the time. <laughs> Can I get a beer, please? Okay. Um, I'm putting on pen, there's too many oversized uh, SUV Lexuses in town, hogging the roads. Yeah. yeah. Here's some basic maths for you. If you drive an oversized SUV Lexus in Phnom Penh on a scale of 1 to 10, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love Cambodia and <laughs> I even love the bum gun. I'm a massive. Why? Oh, yay, okay. Why? Because it's a way sexier experience? No, I do. I love Cambodia and I. I find it difficult to understand why I can't convince my friends to come over and visit. I, I just can't think why, especially when they ask me how it's going, and I tell them that in Cambodia there's no need to wipe your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it for years. No, but I look... <laughs> Digest that one. <laughs> Not literally. But um, I love Asia in general, and uh, South Korea have just announced that they're going to build the world's first invisible skyscraper. <laughs> Honestly, it's true, it's true. It was on the internet. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's covered in LEDs and it's covered in cameras, and it displays what's on the opposite side of the skyscraper, on the side that you can see. So it completely blends in with the landscape. And I thought that was, from an, from an ecological point of view, I thought that was a brilliant idea. Until I read that the construction site is right next to uh, Ichion International Airport. 
Do you reckon they should maybe inform the Korean Aviation Authority? Or, ah, oh, fuck it, they'll find out eventually. <laughs> Uh, but what I want to know is, how did they know it's the world's first? <laughs> we could be surrounded by fucking invisible skyscrapers and we just don't know it. I'm sure I bump into a few of them when I'm drunk, and that's an excuse to use anyway. Uh, I was at a party the other night, uh, sorry, the other week. Sounds like I was just going to make something up then. I am. But I was at a party the other week at Meta House. If you don't know Meta House, it's a, it's a German cultural centre. Uh, it's amazing. It's, uh, it hires out creative space. And uh, they've got like a gallery and they've got like a performance area. It's, it's, it's great. You should get yourself down there. But at this particular party, they were selling nitrous oxide. Which if you don't know, it's laughing gas. Which, for a German cultural centre, I thought it was a very, very efficient way to enforce fun! <laughs> I'm glad the biggest cheer of the night <laughs> is a semi-racist comment towards our European brethren. <laughs> it didn't help that the nitrous oxide was for sale right near the shower block. <laughs> No, but despite all this, it was an excellent bar mitzvah. Is, the, is, is he being racist on the stage? I don't know what's going on anymore. He just, he just turned that to the Germans. And... <laughs> so I'll just change the, the tone. I agree when people say that dog's penises look like open lipsticks. <laughs> But when a woman's putting on a lipstick, you never hear anyone say it looks like a canine's cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never worn lipstick in my life. Which makes me think, all those crazy shades of lipstick that they've got, they've got like late autumn sunset. You wear that, don't you? <laughs> Burned cherry cinnamon. They've overlooked the ultimate name for a lipstick shade. Dog Dick Pink. <laughs> I'd buy that. But, uh, I'm ashamed to say, the other day, I, um, I almost ran over a woman with a small child. Luckily, the small child's legs buckled under my weight before we hit the woman. <laughs> don't worry if you don't get that, it's a bit left field. <laughs> but I told that joke to my friend the other day, I said I'm going to tell this joke at comedy club. And he went, don't get it. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. I said, so in the joke, I'm about to hit a woman with a small child, right? Okay, yeah. But then it turns out in the punchline that it's me with a small child on its back, not in a car, about to hit the woman. Understand? Oh yeah, yeah, get it now, yeah. Was everyone okay? <laughs> it didn't happen, it's just a joke. Alright, it didn't happen. <laughs> I thought it sounded a bit far-fetched. <laughs> It'd have been well more believable if you were driving a Lexus. <laughs> Why? Because we're in Pompeii. <coughs> now because you're an arsehole. <laughs> if you think that being on TV makes you look fat, stop getting in the shot. You look fat off TV as well. <laughs> but I'm not a fan of TV, and I'm not a fan of popular culture to be honest. Uh, just because something's popular it doesn't mean it's good, in fact, the exact opposite. If something becomes more popular, that's a good indicator of how bad it is. Take Gangnam Style for example, billion hits on YouTube, total bag of shit. 
teacher came up to me during the peak of uh, the popularity of Gangnam Style. And he, he's a really nice, sweet, sincere, genuine guy. And he came up to me and he just wanted to strike some conversation up at some common ground. And he said to me, teacher, do you like the Gangnam Style? Now, the only way I could be nice to him in this situation was to completely lie to his face. But we're taught not to lie, so I had to be a cunt. <laughs> and I said, no, I really don't like Gangnam Style. And he, he was confused and he was crestfallen and I felt really bad inside. And he said, but teacher, it is so popular. I said, the reason I hate it is because it's so popular, which made him even more confused. So then I could see he was trying to rescue the conversation and I could see a million things going through his head. And eventually he stopped and he looked up at me with his innocent big brown eyes. And then a light bulb went off in his head and a big smile crossed his face. And he looked at me with such hope, with a glint of expectation in his eye. He thought he'd got it. And he was like, surely this is the key that will not fail to get on board with Teacher Scott. And he looked at me and he went, teacher, just like that, he's very feminine, and he went, what about the Justin Bieber? Now I have to be a cunt twice that day. <laughs> Do you know that proverb, when one door closes, another one opens? Do you know it? Mm. Well, the reverse must be true. And I just hope one day the door that I'm opening is the one that slams in Justin Bieber's face. <laughs> And if I knew which one it was, I'd just be opening it repeatedly. <laughs> Too many people like Justin Bieber in this room, I can feel that. <laughs> but he doesn't like Justin Bieber. Um, I'm also not a fan of tr popular trend. Are you get a sense of the feel of how I am now. Anything that is not liked, I think is great. Again, the clothes give it away. But any I'm not a fan of popular trend at all. Like, for example, totes, which is short for totally. Totes amaze. Epic. I fucking hate epic. I know what it means in the real sense, but you don't have to put it before every single word just to sound cool. Amaze balls? That means. I don't know what that means, but I think I bought one in the late 80s for my pet hamster. Amaze balls, $3.99. But when you combine them as well, that's even worse. Nothing sounds more desperate than a grown man combining trend and language to sound hip with the kids. Yeah, man, I was just down the street the other day and it was like toots and these balls. It's like an epic win. It's only excusable if you're under the age of 14. Or if you're pretending to be under the age of 14 as an online paedophile. <laughs> Did you just say beautiful on stage? I didn't do it to annoy you. Here's a joke for this gentleman. I'm going to I'm going to end on like a couple of questions now. You've been a good crowd, honestly. <coughs> but I'm going to end on a couple of questions. The first one is for the gentleman in the audience. Is it weird or is it acceptable when you're taking a piss to strike up friendly conversation with the man standing next to you? Is it weird or is it acceptable? Weird. 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 See, I've, I've been asking people all week just so I could just tell this joke just to see what the reaction would be. I think it's perfectly fine, but a lot of people don't and it's fine, but like, when somebody strikes a conversation with you, don't overreact. Yesterday, that's, uh, sorry, last week, I actually was taking a piss and I struck up a conversation with a stranger standing next to me in the supermarket queue. <laughs> And he informed security, how hostile is that? <laughs> Thank you for the clap. He was actually, it was actually in that standing next I'm sorry about that, mate. <laughs> I'm only joking, I wasn't in the supermarket here, I was in the dry goods section, so it's fair, fair. Alright, here's the last question and then I'm gonna get off stage. I'm gonna I don't know whether to pick on some of the individual or just ask everybody as a whole. But I'll ask everybody as a whole. There we go. What shape is a pig's tail? What shape? Just put, okay, I'll count to three and then say what shape is. What shape is a pig's tail? One, two, three. Curly. It's not curly, it's straight. Sure, there's a few twisted ones, but it's That's a common straight. misconception. It's actually the penises straight. which are curly. And like, so where does this common misconception come from? Excuse me, 
shape? No, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you where it comes from because I researched it on Google I and we're, we're not happy with my browser history. Straight is not a shape, right? But they're actually straight. There's a few twisted ones, but they're generally, they're generally uh, straight. It's the penises that are curly. And my theory where this comes from if is... If they're good for anything, Porky pig. Yeah. Can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> it, I think it, it's straight, it's curly. Just shut the fuck up. Straight's not a shape. You're still not shutting the fuck up. <laughs> right, so anyway, so this is my theory, it's Porky Pig. Warner Brothers made this common misconception. And before then it was widely known that pigtails were, pigtails were straight and not curly. It was the penises that are corkscrew shaped. If you don't believe me, Google it, or next time you see a pig, have a look. It's like a feel. <laughs> so anyway, I can only hazard a guess and what happened in the animation studios of Warner Brothers that day? <laughs> John! John! Psst! Look at that! Look what I've done to Porky Me! Good God, James! Everyone knows the tails are straight! <laughs> yeah, I know! <laughs> It's the penises that are curly. Yeah. What have you done, James? I drew a willy on his bum. <laughs> <laughs> Why? We're going to introduce Porky Pig to the entire world next week. How many have you done this to? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Imagine if they'd have done that to Bugs Bunny. Easter would be a nightmare! <laughs> and imagine if uh, Disney had done that to Pluto. Instead of a tail, they'd have just drawn an open lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> that deserves a clap. <laughs> Especially because that would have been epic amaze balls. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Scotty Davis. Peace, have a good night. Thank you very much. Scotty Muldoon! Yeah. Yeah. Okay guys, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna have a ten minute <laughs> 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 <laughs>